Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Maniacs. Now earlier today, I had sent, given out a puzzle today for you guys to solve and see how well you fare with that puzzle, which was a diagonal Sudoku. And now I did receive a great response from the people with varied solving times. Obviously the ones who are already experts were able to crack it within five minutes, but quite a few people took around 10 minutes or more. So this is basically to guide them on how to solve a diagonal Sudoku faster. The tips and tricks that we use as professional solvers on how we can solve the same puzzle quickly in a competitive environment. However, before I go into actually solving the Sudoku, I will just be speaking about a few techniques that we use for diagonal Sudokus especially. All right. Now all the techniques that we learned for the classic Sudokus will still be applicable for all the variants because in the end all variants conform to the rules of a classic Sudoku. That is no digit can repeat in a row, column or a 3 by 3 box. And since the variants also follow that constraint they will fall under the purview of those rules. So those techniques will still be applicable on a variant. Yet, when we have additional constraints, for example, here the digits cannot repeat on the diagonal line. So these additional constraints, there are some additional techniques that we use when we are solving. So first we'll quickly have a look at those before I actually move on to solving the puzzle. Now one thing that I notice is, since the digits cannot repeat on the diagonals, these diagonals form an extra region where the digits 1 to 9 will occur at least once or exactly once, not at least but exactly. So let's assume that I have an H here and an H here and in the box 1 I have pencil marks for 8 in 5 different cells. How do I use the diagonal to come down to a single digit. Now when I look at the top left to bottom row diagonal, the parts of the diagonal that are in box 9 cannot contain the digit 8, alright? And we know 8 has to repeat once on the diagonal. It, in box 5 also, the dotted lines of the diagonal top left to bottom right cannot contain an 8 because we already have an 8 in the box. So which basically means the 8 for this diagonal has to occur in the three cells which are in box 1, right? And I know based on the pencil marks that are available, again this is just an example for illustration only. There's only one cell with a dotted line that can contain an 8. So I know for sure the 8 has to be here because if this was not an 8, the entire top left to bottom right diagonal would not have an 8, right? Hence, I can safely remove the other pencil marks and place an H in the central cell. This is one way of using the diagonal. This other, uh, what you say, option that I use, say for example, the possibility along this diagonal, the H can be placed only in these two, hypothetically again, right? The 8 can be placed only in these two and for the bottom left to top right diagonal, the 8 is in two places. How do we use these constraints to identify a place? Now when I look at both these cells, right, I'll just mark them with grey. And now when I look at this cell, this cell is a buddy cell to both the cells marked in grey because it shares a line, uh, sorry, it's in the same row with the 8 in row 2, column 2 and it's also in the same column as the 8 in row 8, column 8. What this means is, irrespective of where the 8 comes in the grey cells, it cannot be placed in row 2, column 8 or the cell marked with yellow. Hence, what we can safely do is we can remove this 8 and this becomes the 8 by 8. 
the elimination. Now, this is a very, very common phenomenon when you're solving a diagonal pseudo. You will find a lot of such situations. All right. So, hope that was clear to you. And there's a point where I also use multiple things. So, for example, if I had an 8 here, here, and these were the possible 8s, and these were the possible 8s. Now, going by that earlier logic, that sorry, let's go with the same color scheme, right? Now, these three 8s, when I look at this. This row 2, column 7, 8 is in the same row as the row 3, column 3. It's in the same column as row 7, column 7. And it is in the same diagonal line which is running from bottom left to top right. Which again means irrespective of where the digit 8 is placed in the gray cells, gray cells it cannot occur in the cell that is marked by yellow here because if this was an 8 8 cannot be here it cannot be here and it cannot be here again because it's in the diagonal so this was another way i use a combination of three cells along the diagonal to eliminate possibilities and it's not necessary that this has to occur along the diagonal so for example if let me just sorry mark these two as so if this is an eight sorry not here i meant eight and eight i look for the body cells and here it would be these two so irrespective of where the eight is placed in the gray cells it cannot occur in the cells which are marked in yellow because the yellow cells share a row or a column depending on where the 8 is placed with the two gray cells. All right. Going forward with this, let's see how we can solve today's video. Now, I know I did say that you can solve it within five minutes once you master these. And please don't go by the length of the video or my solving time saying that, oh, you did not complete it in five minutes. The reason being, when you're solving it competitively, you will not be speaking as much as I'm trying to do right now. Because I'm also trying to simultaneously explain the technique. And if, while we are solving, when the advanced version of this technique is being used, I may pause the solving to explain the technique. So please don't take this as my actual solving time for the video, right? So, coming to this puzzle that we had today. You remember what I say about solving a variant, right? How do we start it? Good job. You guys remember it, right? We always started like a classic. So the first thing I notice is the 8s cannot be here. It cannot be in this column. So, there are only two places for the 8. But we already have an 8 on the bottom left to top right diagonal. So this cannot be an 8. So the only place for an 8 is here. And by classic rules, 8, 8, this is an 8. 8, 8, 8 can be in two cells. But again, the diagonal, the 8 has already been placed. So this becomes an 8 and this is an 8. And we got the 8. 6, 6, this is a 6 because we already have the two sixes here so this becomes my six. six 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 cannot be here it has to be in these two but we already have a six on the diagonal so this cannot be a six this is my six and what we were speaking about this top left to bottom right diagonal the six is not here it's not here so it has to be in box one this six eliminates this so this is my six and this six with this gets me a 6 here, which conforms to the, we got it, right? Now, 4, 4, 4, 7, 7, this can't be a 7, so this is my 7. Next, in this central box, 4 cannot be here, 
it there are three cells but I have a four here so this can't be a four so I get a pencil mark for four in this which basically means on the top right to bottom left diagonal I cannot have a four so by classic four four I can place the four in two cells but this diagonal cannot have a four right because our four is already on the diagonal in the box five so this is my four sorry <clears throat> let's make it a proper four and in this box again the four would be in these two cells so we'll just quickly mark it and then here it will be this so going by the diagonal rule i have this seven it cannot be in these two cells and this seven cannot be in these three so seven for the bottom left to top right diagonal has to be in these two cells we have a seven here this is not a seven this is my seven 7, 7, it, oops, 7, this cannot be a 7, this becomes my 7, 7, 7, this is a 7, this becomes my 7. This so far, 5, 5, again two places, but I see the 5 is already there on the diagonal, so this has to be a 5, 5, so in box 3, the 5 has to be in this. Now again, the top right to bottom left diagonal, 5 cannot be here. It cannot be in box 5 because we already got a 5. So the 5 has to be in one of these two, correct? But this cannot be a 5 because we already have a 5 in row 7. So this is a 5, this is a 5. All right? So this cannot be a 5, so my 5 can be here, with this 5, I can have a 5 in these two. Now, we have done enough of classic solving, so let's see how best we can proceed. So in the top left to bottom right diagonal, I see that we have got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So basically 1, 2, 3 and 9 are missing. Now 3 is already placed in box 5, so 3 cannot be in these two, correct? So the only place I can have a 3 is in these two. And now when I look at the other diagonal, I have a 5, 6, 7, 8. 3 again cannot be in the central box, so 3 can be placed only in these two cells. Just earlier we were speaking about this. Using these two cells, we find the common body cell here, right? If 3 was in row 7, in the gray cell that is, it would be in the same row, so this cannot be a 3. But if 3 were in row 3 gray cell, it would be in the same column as this yellow cell. Hence, we know for sure that irrespective of where the 3 comes, sorry, in the bottom left to top right diagonal, it cannot be here. Hence, I get my 3. This is a 3. 3 cannot be here. 3 cannot be here. And now the missing digits are 1, 2, and 9. 1, 2, 9. 2, 9. 1, 2, 9. But when I look at column 8, the only missing digits are 2 and 9. So this has to be a 2. This has to be a 9 because I already have a 9 in the box, so I can eliminate this. And for row 7, the missing digits are 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Alright? Now, this we come to an interesting stage. This is something I am going to explain to you right now, which we did not discuss earlier. When I look at these three cells, alright? Or rather, I'll just focus on the central cell. This central cell is a body cell to all these three cells because with row 7, column 3, it shares the uh, bottom left to top right diagonal. With row 7, column 5, it shares the column. And with row 7, column 7, it shares the top left to bottom right diagonal. Which basically means any digit that is placed in the central gray cell cannot occur in these three cells. 
करेक्ट सो हाउ डज दैट हेल्प अस व्हाट दैट मीन दिस इफ दिस वाज अ वन इट विल नॉट बी पॉसिबल टू प्लेस अ वन इन रो सेवन अगेन इफ दिस वाज अ टू इट वुड एलिमिनेट द टू फ्रॉम द रो सेवन एंड आई वुड नॉट हैव अ टू इन रो सेवन हेंस I can safely eliminate one and two there and place the nine, which would make this to be a two. This is a one. This is a two. One one. This becomes a one. So that's a five and a three. So the three is out from here. So is the one. So that's a two. This becomes my three. Christopher, you see how we use that the constraints of the diagonal to eliminate. that possibilities sorry about that we i forgot to put the phone on silent so we have a one nine pair here so this has to be a three this three cannot be here so the three has to be in these two which means the three for row one is in box two but i can't have a three here so this is a <coughs> three this is a one nine this is a one and here i have a 1 2 and a 1 2 this is a 1 2 this is a 1 9 and a 1 2 9 now again this 5 eliminated this so this was a 5 this became a 5 and a 4 this became a 4 and a, sorry 1 here so this is a 9 i get a 1 2 pair 9 9 4 4 This was a four. One nine. This was a two nine. All right. And here the missing digits were. Sorry, one and two. So one and a two. So this becomes a one. This is a two. This is a nine. This becomes a one. This is a nine. So I get a two and a three here because I already have a two in this one. This is a three and a nine. So this is a one. This is a nine. This is a two. This is a one. The last digit here was a three. So this becomes a three. This is a nine. This is a nine, and the final two. So you see how the diagonal constraints act together to eliminate possibility. Again, don't go by my solving time here because in a competitive environment, as I said, we won't be speaking so much. and we'll be quickly jotting down numbers so always look out for the possibilities where the diagonals act with the other cells and create that constraint of body cells and with that will help you eliminate the digit now once again i'm going to add a description to this puzzle in the description of the video right now i want you to go back solve it again using the techniques that we discussed and learned and let me know how fast you could complete it today after learning these elimination techniques i would love to hear you back from you to know if this was actually helpful or not and also you can let me know through the comments obviously that if the previous approach that we had during the classics where i just showed and solved or do you want me to continue like this place give you a puzzle beforehand at the start of the day and then produce the video on the techniques at the in the second part of the day let me know whichever suits you and we'll try to follow that hope you enjoyed the video if you did do like share it with your friends and i don't think i need to say it again but for that do subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so you know we are going to have many more such interesting and fun puzzles for you so till the next time Happy solving